Hey YouTube, you have Leonard here. Bring guys and gals a review of the Kanto Music Festival arc of Kono Oto. It covers chapters 22 to 28. So what I'm trying to do through means of this video series is basically I'm reading all of Kono Oto and I want to do live reactions to it, but in my attempt to try and catch it very quick, I realize it may not be time efficient. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm covering basically every single arc and after I read it, I'm doing a review. And I'm gonna try and keep these reviews relatively brief. I don't wanna just recount everything that's happening, um, but really talk about the things that I enjoy out of this arc. So when I look at the Kanto Music Festival arc, everybody, the best way I can describe it is that of all the arcs we've had so far, this is my favorite. And the reason I say this is because it's the first time in the story that I'm seeing anyway, where we're not just focused necessarily on Chika, Kurata, and the rest of Tokisei High's Koto group. And what I mean by that is that we get other schools involved, and I think what the mangaka does very well with this series is that as I'm seeing characters get introduced, they all feel very real. They all have a backstory, um, real life problems, things that you can get behind, and I really enjoy those type of stories, and I think it takes a lot of skill to make you care about people who aren't the main characters of a story. So without recounting everything, I do want to focus on the individual schools um, of note, you have Merio Hai, and the main person there is Osuke. He's friends with Kurata's brother. The whole plot line there is the fact that Kurata, as you recall, he was supposed to go to Merio, or he wanted to, but he was rejected. He wasn't able to get into the school, uh, his brother did, and that was a big deal. And I think the big thing with Osuke that I personally enjoy is the fact that he has this demeanor being a happy-go-lucky person, very kind, loves people, but through means of his backstory, you learn that, no, in fact, he doesn't necessarily love people, but he, because of all the stuff he went through, illness, his childhood friend, Asano, I believe her name is, the bullying and wanting to protect those relationships, he determined that he needed this facade in order to be able to not lose anything, to not be alone. And the way he plays reflects that. He can read emotions, so he's able to be the perfect centerpiece to the whole Mario club Koto group and at the same time his own particular sound the whole audience reacts was like a very deep sorrowful it pulls you in his sound pulls you in and you wouldn't expect that given his general disposition so I think Medio Osuke was very interesting for me now you have Himesaka Himesaka is the powerhouse group so for Himesaka the main girl that we know is Kazusa she's the one who's obsessed with Hotsuki she believes that Hotsuki should be part of Himesaka you can see that she clearly looks up to Hotsuki. The main conflict is the fact that Kazusa believes that Hotsuki should be at Himesaka, a true powerhouse school. She's wasting her talent being with a group like Totsuke, where honestly she thinks they're all lacking and they're not deserving of her talent. That's the main issue that we're getting in this arc and Tokisei trying to prove the fact that they do belong. So I kind of liked her as a character. We didn't get too much from her from a character building standpoint, but she looks down on her main group. We get a few of her schools. There's this one group, this kid named Senchan, who has a grandma who's sick. Um, I felt for his backstory. I didn't necessarily care for him and his partner, though, um, when they were playing. That was just me. But they gave a very good performance. I just didn't feel as emotionally connected. But I felt it. I felt something. And then you have this mysterious group called Hakuto, who ends up being so pivotal because Hakuto, led by this character named Mio, they end up winning the whole entire tournament, and they're this unknown group. That said, if I just quickly focus on Tokisei, the main thing I really liked here is the fact that I went into this thinking, I don't see how they can win, but I've been proven wrong in the past and maybe they're going to do something crazy. And they did this whole thing where Chika gets injured. I'm just like, on their own, they probably still wouldn't have won. But now I'm just like, because Chika gets injured, I'm just like, they're going to fall apart because like, how are they supposed to keep the sound, the tempo? I think about Mizuhara, Mizuhara can't keep rhythm. Like, how are they supposed to do this? And I thought that what was really well done is the fact that you see them breaking apart on stage and they're doing bad. They're doing pretty bad and people are just like, oh, what is this? Suzuka Sensei is just kind of like, huh, should have known, posers. And then for them to all of a sudden regain themselves, regain their composure, realize that they can't overcompensate for everyone. They have to find their sound. They have to focus on themselves and blend together. I thought that was very amazing. And their performance, again, with this manga, you can't hear anything. But you get the full sense of it, the artwork. It's almost like the best way to describe the performance is like a rush of wind. And I feel like Togi say their main 
thing that works for them is the feeling because of the natural bonds they have with each other because they care about each other as individuals and they've overcome so much it's like when they play you feel all of that it's very genuine and i love the fact that the manga depicts that that they were to pick themselves up and even though they didn't win it kind of felt like a moral victory honestly i'm not going to lie it felt like a moral win so i thought that was very cool again i love getting all these different schools and one of my favorite parts as well fast forwarding to the end of this Hotsuki is sitting back, right? And she wants to go and she wants to talk to Chika. She ends up hiding. I think she was going to give him something as a thanks because he hurt himself basically protecting her, even though he hasn't revealed this. But then he overhears Kazusa and Chika having a conversation. Now, what's interesting is that she says that they're the reason Hotsuki has changed for the worse. Her sound is no longer the sound from back when Hotsuki had that, as we remember, that performance that got her removed from the Hotsuki group. But it was such a powerful performance and people remember that. But Chiga counters the fact that, yeah, you're right, her sound isn't the same. But it's not because it got worse. Her sound is gentler. Hotsuki is changing as a person. She's becoming a better person, overcoming the trauma and the sadness that she has. And now she has friends who support her and her music reflects that. I thought that was very beautiful. Kazusa in her heart of hearts recognizes this is the case as well. She won't admit it because she's OD Sunada. But I thought that was a beautiful moment. And seeing also how Chika defends her. He continues to know Hotsuki so well. And Hotsuki being so happy. I love it. That, that, that's my ship. That is my ship. But with that everyone. Those are my thoughts on the Kanto Music Festival. Again a very very good arc. I enjoyed it a lot. So far my favorite. I'll see you guys next for the next arc definitely. So um, with that let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Like if you liked the video. Subscribe and like my content. Greatly appreciate it. I'll see you for the next one. I'm Leonard and I'm out. Take care everybody. Peace.